Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time uh, to our bite-sized blended learning workshop at Faculty of Applied and Creative Art. Okay. All right. So, speaker of the day, uh, speaker one, me, myself, Sharifa Fazidawati. Speaker two, uh, Mr. Yao Chong Li. And speaker three, Ms. Nur Haslina Senin. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, the, ten the tentative for today. Uh, for the first agenda, I would like to introduce the new elite features, but I am not going to cover uh, all of the new features. Uh, I would like to cover the one that I think that is useful for you guys uh, to put in your elite. And then next uh, agenda, we will have a sharing session with the winner of Teaching Excellent Award Semester 2 Section 2019 and 2002 for Transformative Teaching Practices which is Mr. Yao Chong Li. But before that, I would like to congratulate Mr. Yao Chong Li for his uh, Fresh from the Ovens Award uh, in the Magu just now. Okay, congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you. And then the third agenda we have is uh, to have a sharing session with the winner of Teaching Excellent Award Semester 1, session 2019-2020 for the category of Immersive Learning Experiences which is me, myself, and for the fourth agenda, we will have like we will have a sharing session with the winner of Teaching Excellent Award Semester 2, session 2018-2019 for the category of Teaching Award, which is Ms. Nurse Haslina Binti Senin. So we will have, uh, we, we are going to end our session at 12, 10 p.m. Okay, so this is uh, the objective or the of the workshop today. The first objective is uh, I would like you, uh, to help you guys to prepare for semester two, 2020-2021 okay, courses for online teaching and learning on ELIP. Uh, I am aware that uh, kita tak banyak masa to prepare our teaching and learning in ELIP sebab hari tu beberapa hari saja lagi nak start send baru uh, kita guna ELIP baru memang agak haywire here and there but for me myself, when I have a look at the new elite, uh, it is very, uh, much, um, sangat fresh. So I think that uh, I think I can accept it. Uh, furthermore, dia punya foto, uh, dia punya features pun lebih kurang sama, and there's a lot of new features that is so interesting to look at, to to try on. Okay. Membuatkan saya rasa dah move on daripada rasa macam ah, kenapa, why now, elite kena tukar and so on, right? And then second is to have a sharing session with Pakar Teaching Excellent Award recipients. Be be uh, because before this, I am uh, aware that a lot of lecturers here have uh, very unique uh, teaching method but they didn't really participate to join the uh, macam award macam ni, they, they didn't submit the borang because mungkin you rasa susah ke apa and then uh, the reason why today we have this sharing session so that uh, it's an eye opener for them uh, to have a look at how others doing it okay and then mungkin ada, we can uh, have some kind of inspiration from the others and then try to apply it in our teaching and learning and to get recognized okay I do hope after this uh, sharing session you guys are keen to uh, participate in this kind of award, okay? Bukan saja untuk di recognize, but you need to inspire others as well, okay? Kalau kita tak ada sharing session ni, saya sebenarnya, honestly, saya tak tahu apa uh, Encik Yao Chong Li dah buat sampai dia menang, apa uh, Cik Haslina dah buat dalam kelas sampai dia dah menang this kind of award. So, I am really, really hope that this sharing session will inspire others to uh, apply whatever that we share today in the teaching and learning. Okay, so this is uh, some of the activity. Okay, maybe you guys can copy this URL and then I would like to know how is your new elite experience. Can you guys do that now? I guess that's it. Lah. All right, so. Majority of you guys like this new elite and yeah, this is a good uh, news for come. Hello, Mr. Terry. Tengok ni, ada banyak yang suka elite baru. Yay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Only two said it's a, it is a comel. Kan, I like it so much and it is customizable. Okay. Alright. So, another activity. Okay. What do you like and dislike about this new elite? Can you type your keywords here?
Okay, we have some of the response here. Okay, access to Moodle app, yes. Mobile app, clean, user friendly, fast, easy. Okay. Not button to do. Oh, it's commercial. Masih teringat ilip lama? What the dah? Kekeliruan, fast, easy. Many unknown functions, yes. Uh, this one I I agree. But I also haven't finished explore anything yet. Okay, but uh, this is not just one way interaction. So if you have other thing that I didn't know about the function in the new elite, you guys are free to share. Yeah. Okay. This is not just only me sharing. Okay. Hmm. I love the tile mode. Better interface. Mobile app interactive mode. So nice interface. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the feedback. Okay. Um, yes, I, I am agree uh, with most of the uh, the keywords here. Tapi yang masih teringat ilik lama tu, oh, I'm so sad. It is time for you guys to move on. Okay. Kalau masih rindu rika ilik lama, pergi je kat ilik bot. Okay. Alright. So, we move on to our next agenda. Okay. Alright, so there are a lot. There's a lot of question. Why are we migrating to the new elite? Because um, <clears throat> this new uh, the all elite that we are using, okay, is version three point two. The new elite is version uh, three point nine. Uh, we have upgrade upgraded it, okay, and hopefully with this upgrade, there's no more issue. Our elite is lagging or slow down, okay, because our old elite dah tak dapat menampung. Um, heavy loads of all our online teaching and learning assessment at the same time. And plus, like you said just now in the keyword just now, it is more user friendly and up to that so that the student can uh, download the Moodle app in their phone so that they can just assess your ELIP through their phone. And then it is um, mobile friendly compared to our uh, old ELIP. Okay. And then one more question that uh, I receive a lot is. Uh, kenapa kita kena log in as guest in uh, elite lama because uh, come don't want student to access to our uh, elite work. Elite work is elite lama kita sebab dalam tu ada banyak exam question and so on so that's why uh, kita kena guna uh, log in as guest. Betul tak Dr. Terry? Do you have something to add on this point? Uh, uh, another reason is because uh, uh, the elite vault sekarang, we cannot use the Unimask identity as well. Uh, so we have to create a, sp uh, a different separate account for you for each lecturer to access. Uh, also, also another, that's another reason lah, security as well. Lah. Uh, All right, thank you so much, Dr. Terry. Uh, so, so, but yes. boleh access, but definitely each lecturer can have access their own course courses in the elite vault. Lah. The, mm -hmm. Total issue with that. Lah. Uh, Right, thank you. Yeah. And then for those who didn't know yet, you and your student can uh, install your this Moodle app in your phone. Okay, so it will prompt you to sign in using browser, sign in using Unimask identity and you can now use the app. All right, so you can uh, try to search it in uh, Google Play or Apple Store and so on. Okay, so far other soalan tak? Am I going too fast? Semua okay? No, okay. Okay, good. Thank you very much. All right, so these are among the new elite features that I will uh, explain to you guys here. Okay. For example, yes, uh, mobile friendly interface. We have accessibility feature for dyslexics. Okay, we have course completion progress bar. We have analytic graphs advanced notification, we have different languages support, we have heat map, pages, level up, and new course content display options, and these activities. But I'm not going to cover uh, how to use these new activities because um, I'm going to take more much time because we have a lot of agenda today. But don't worry, uh, our friends in Faculty of Engineering have covered it. Okay, So if the editing have been done by Dr. Terry and Kam, then I will uh, forward you guys the link to the uh, tutorials of these new activities later on. Okay, So uh, let's move on to our elite. Okay, I will uh, try to 
uh, demo to you guys. Okay, where's my elite? Oh, this is elite lang mga. Okay. Oh, okay. I will just open my elite. Mm. Okay. Can you guys see this? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. All right. So this is our dashboard, and uh, for your information, you can customize this page. Okay. Click customize, and then you can rearrange. Yang ni nak letak ke atas ke, kat bawah ke. But I think this is just nice. Saya tak tak berani nak tukar-tukar. But yeah, you can tukar-tukar. Okay. Okay. All right. And then. Okay. Accessibility feature for dyslexic. Okay. You can search here. Boleh nampak sini dekat tepi ni accessibility settings. Okay. This one, stop customizing this page. Okay, accessibility setting, macam saya cakap tadi, default font or you can use dyslexic font. Okay, uh, want to try how does dyslexic font looks like? Okay, boleh kita save. Okay, macam ni rupa dia. So, I don't know what is the reason behind this font, uh, font type with dyslexis. Uh, maybe Dr. Terry tahu? Oh, it's... it's it's, yeah, for dyslexics, they have issue mm -hmm. with uh, identifying the letters. Yes. So you see the pat the the way the style of the font, ke bawah mm -hmm. dia tebal, some, it mm -hmm. makes it easier for them to mm -hmm. identify the text lah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so All right. Based on my briefing with different group, uh, even the 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 veteran lecturer also find it very useful. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. it help them easy to see also to read the text as well. Some oh. of them. Uh, if you go up there, you if you go the top part. Okay. Uh, if you see a font size, you can increase the size, yes. and change uh, the color. Uh, mm -mm. Okay. They can customize some more lah. Yes, menarik ya ini baru ni. Okay, tapi saya lebih suka yang biasa. Okay, so I will just uh change it into default font. Alright, everyone doing good now. Alright, so we move on to the next features, which is course completion progress bar. Okay, I will go to my course to demo. Okay, for example, uh, this one. Okay, animation studio two. Oh, ni dah saya dah buat macam macam. Okay. Alright, this is uh, my course design fundamental. Okay. Alright, so you can go to turn editing on. First, okay, go to turn editing on. Oh, yeah, I forgot that we have new lecturers yang baru masuk dan baru dat, balik daripada PhD. Uh, I am sorry that uh, this new, this uh, today I am not going to demo from scratch because uh, time constraint, but don't worry, I will have another session for you guys to terangkan uh, lebih details about Philip from uh, the beginning until the end. So, but sekarang ni, I just explain on the new features only. All right. Okay. So, just turn editing on. Okay. And then add the block. Kalau you tak turn editing on, you tak nampak add the block ni. Okay. All right. So, go to add a block so you can see that there's a lot of new features here. Okay. Yang very interesting. You guys can uh, try an error. Okay. Tapi don't worry kalau you dah masukkan tapi you dah tak nak balik a block tu, you boleh delete later on. Okay, for example, uh, you have course completion uh, status or progress bar. You can letak later on course menu ataupun uh, saya nak try heat map. Heat map ni, uh, you boleh nampak berapa orang dah view dan berapa orang dah buka you punya uh, nota, for example. Okay, saya letak heat map. Okay, you see here, boleh nampak tak ni? Ada 59 yang dah view. And only 28 yang dah buka. Okay. This is very useful. Tapi kita tak boleh tahu siapa yang tengok tu. Okay. Alright. But if you don't want this. Sebab dia nampak very complicated kat sini kan. You can view here. Ada anak panah ni. Show and hide blocks ni. This is blocks punya administration punya tab. Okay. Ni heat map. You boleh buang. Okay. This one, you can delete heat map block. Okay. Boleh? Boleh ni? Student akan nampak ke okay, ataupun okay. tak akan nampak? 
Oh, that one I'm not sure. Whether Boleh tak kita try? Okay, switch role to student. Oh, student tak nampak. Kita okay. hajar yang nampak. Okay. Alright, so kalau you tak nak, you just uh, buang. Turn editing on dulu. Baru you boleh buang. Okay. Alright, what else that you want to add to your blog? Anyone? Boleh nampak kat sini? Completion progress tu game, game. Completion Game Mana dia uh, Completion progress Kita tengok completion progress dulu ya eh. Completion progress Okay hmm. Mouse over uh, Ni madam okay. Tapi dia Tepi ni sangat lah Boleh nampak ke Ni nampak. not completed uh, Not completed activity So this is our activity lah Oh, okay. Azie, you, you, if yes. kalau tepi sangat, you can re reorganize the 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 block lah. You can oh, bring it up. Ah. Aduh, Terry, Terry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay. 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 okay, all right. Okay. Ah, ni, you boleh ni. Overview of student tu tengok. Ah, ni. Oh, boleh okay. Tengok. okay. Progress. All right. So Menarik. kita boleh check dia dah apa ni access content yang mana lah. Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, ah, activity. Hmm. So, dapat ah, track okay. sekarang lah. Hmm, 54% dia dah yes, tengok. Yes, macam tu. Ah, so, ah. guys, kalau kita nak bagi markah extra, senang sikit lah sebab kita nampak yes. dia punya online participation. Ah. Okay. Z, please repeat lepas ah. Thank you. Ah, yang ni ke? Ah, ah yang okay, ni. Okay, yep. okay. Alright, okay. Saya repeat balik eh. Sekejap ya. So, cara kita nak buka, nak kita nak cari blog tadi. Okay, you must turn editing on. Kalau tak turn editing on, dia tak akan nampak blok tu kat tepi sebelah kiri. Okay. Add a block. Okay. Tadi kita dah letak course completion tadi tu, dia dah tak ada dah kat sini. Okay. Kita dah masukkan tadi kan. Menu okay. kat tepi tak nampak dalam screen Z. Menu kat tepi mana? Sebelah, sebelah sebelah kiri tu yang yang under uh, dashboard tu. Oh, ada dashboard. Tak nampak dalam screen. So, we don't know which one you click just now. Ah, I see. Okay. Saya nampak. Uh, nampak eh? Ya, nampak, nampak eh? Nampak. Saya nampak. Hmm, hmm why eh? Ada oh. tak? Uh, okay, okay, okay dah. I adjust ah, my add. screen. Okay, sorry, sorry. Alright, so add a block. Okay, tadi tu. But, kalau you tak turn editing on, dia tak akan nampak. Add a block. Lepas tu, you letak completion progress. Okay. And then, kita tengok overview of students. Ah, dekat sini kita dah nampak. Student ni ah, tengok atas je. Yang lain tu dia tak buka. 8% saja dia punya progress for uh, week 1 tu tadi. Okay. Okay, kalau you dah tak nak. Okay, ni. Dah. Okay. Boleh ni? Okay, kita nak tengok mana siapa-siapa ni? Tadi siapa cakap nak apa tadi? Din ke? Din nak apa tadi? Try. Game. Game. Game? Kat mana ha, bila, game? Bila ada uh, apa? Nak add apa? Add activity tu macam ada function-function game ke? Oh yang tu. Oh yang tu. Oh, macam ha. saya cakap tadi, uh, Z tak akan cover game tu sebab uh, it will take much time tapi don't okay. worry kita punya kawan from FK dah ada buat tutorials on the game nanti dah habis editing semua I will send the link to you guys alright okay lagi calendar kita boleh try calendar tak I nak add calendar okay ni dia dah akan bagi tahu apa return assignment kita dah nak due dah okay so kita boleh view dekat sini this one ah uh, to be graded alright Okay, kalau tak nak, just uh, delete calendar block. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay Zee ya. Yeah. Nak add also. Uh, for okay. student. For mm -hmm. student on the, when you look at your left bar here, uh, okay. ada calendar kan, boleh bawa elite right. form. Uh, ah, this one, ada, ada, uh, ada. This one is useful okay. for student juga. They can see all the assignments that is due on that, mm. on that month. And yes. the following month pun dapat. So, senang for them to check lah. Okay, which yeah. assignment nak akan due dekat-dekat. Okay. Uh, Alright, thank you. Uh, ada yeah. soalan for calendar kan. Let's say if uh, our assignment is submitted through Google Drive. 
kita hantar link ke dalam Elip ni tapi boleh tak kita set the deadline tu dekat calendar sebab I think yang ini kalau you submit assignment through Elip kan mm -hmm. uh. uh, kalau Google Drive link macam mana kita boleh tak set uh, deadline date tu Oh dapat okay, let's say you you use the the assignment tool okay mm -hmm. the assignment tool you put the deadline lah bila then it will appear here Uh, just oh, the student yeah. student yang akan upload the the Google link dalam the assignment tool. Right. Oh, but uh, uh, the calendar is linked to the assignment. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, uh. Sebab selalu I buat macam Google Drive punya link and then I terus paste dekat uh, Elip. Oh, okay. I pakai so, Elip. Okay, so so it's better that uh -huh. yeah student student mm -hmm. give their link and submit the link to your assignment punya tool tu. Okay. Uh, then right. you will appear. Uh. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. Right. Lagi, ada anything that you want to try? Slider, statistic, vision counter. Uh, online users, kalau kita nak juga. Okay, online users. Alright, so only me here. Alright, so kalau dah tak nak di step, you boleh tekan sini dan kita akan dapat tab yang lebih luas dekat sini. Okay, and uh, we have also different languages support here. Okay, you can see ada bahasa Melayu, English, bahasa Arab. Ni saya tak tahu. Kita try bahasa Melayu eh. Macam mana rupa dia? Uh, terus tukar laman saya, kursus saya. Okay, so nak tukar bahasa apa lagi? Ni. So dia akan tukar terus. Hmm. So this one may be useful for international student yang Um, mungkin dari China dia tak familiar sangat dengan bahasa Inggeris so dia orang boleh tukar ni lah. Okay. Alright. So what else? Ada lagi soalan tak nak tanya anything? Ya yeah, you guys tak faham. Maybe Z boleh share function yang Z rasa sangat best untuk Oh yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, tadi tu Uh, macam calendar tu dah Terry bagi tahu tadi. Uh, another thing is uh, kalau you guys malas nak type tapi you guys suka nak show your face, okay? Add an activity, okay? Pergi dekat uh, label, okay? Label. Alright, so just click ni, record yes. video, okay? For mm -hmm. example lah, eh? record video lah, start recording. Tapi tak lama lah, sekejap je. Alamak, tak boleh lah. So oh, mungkin dia dua tempat tengah access kamera tu. Yes, yes betul betul. Dia ada complete kat situ. But you can use this, okay, record video, dah record lepas tu uh, dia akan appear kat sini, lepas tu you can just save and return to course. That's it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Very easy. So, so that you tak perlu nak tag. Sorry, sorry Z, how tak. long is the duration? Uh, tak lama. If I'm not mistaken, Dr. Terry Berapa macam tak. Berapa second je? 10, 10 second macam tu ke? Ha, ah. uh, dia, 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 dia macam bite size video lah. Quick one. Yeah, ah. quick one. Tak perlu lama macam, sangat. Macam beri message tu. Yes. Okay, another thing that I find it and I, another thing that I find it useful is uh, sekarang kan kita semua tengah mengajar online. So, kalau kita nak uh, apa tu, paste the link, URL link tu dekat label memang takkanlah kita nak paste macam tu saja macam link, link Okay, click here. Alright, so for example, ni adalah saya nak copy, uh, paste, okay, dekat uh, my elite. You just highlight this and then go to mm. link. Mm. Okay, alright, and create link. Lepas tu, where step and return to course. Okay, yang ni student akan klik ni dan terus pergi dekat link tadi tu. Uh, so tak perlulah dia orang nak copy paste ataupun tak perlulah a uh, very lengthy URL that you have in your uh, elite page. Okay. And then kalau you guys nak buat a uh, very apa tu presentable button pun macam tu juga. Saya tak ada contoh button kat sini ya. Okay, edit setting. Saya ada tak contoh button. That's okay. Saya try eh. Okay, kita try edit or insert image. Okay, browse series, choose file. Ah, uh, document, elite, banner elite. For example, this one. Okay, update this file. 
Okay, this one is too big. Kita akan minimizekan dia. Mm. Alright, save image. Okay. This image is decorative only. Save image. For example, ni adalah button yang mm. you nak letak your course file later on. Okay, bila student click ni, dia akan link to the uh, course outline. Okay, ni. Mm. Click ni. Alright, link. Okay. Uh, jap, browse repositories. Choose file. Ni, course outline ni. Okay, click open. Upload this file. Alright. And then save and return to course. Okay. When student click ni, dia akan go to the course outline. You see? Very easy. Oh, this, this course uh, outline kena upload dekat uh, elip dulu ke ataupun dia dalam kita punya computer? Dalam you punya computer. Oh, okay. Uh, dalam you punya computer, lepas tu masukkan, uh, linkkan. Am I going too fast? Adakah you guys nak saya repeat? Okay, everyone is doing boleh, good. Boleh, boleh. Kita tolong repeat sekali lagi. Repeat, okay. Alright. Uh, delete ya. Huh? Okay. So, this is useful kalau you, you boleh try search uh, button generator in uh, you, uh, YouTube lah, in website. Lepas tu, you tulis kat situ, um, course uh, outline button. Okay. Tapi saya tak ada button tu, just click label. Yes, label. Lepas tu ambil gambar, insert or edit image. Okay, enter URL. Okay, upload the file, choose file. So I want this one. Click open. Okay, upload this file. Okay, this one is too big, kita akan tukar size dia, 100 only. Okay. Don't forget to click this image is decorative only or if you can describe this image for someone who cannot see it, better, all right? Okay, click save image. All right, and then click gambar tadi, go to here, ni, link, link, lepas tu, browse repositories, okay, choose file, yes, go to file that you want to link it to the pictures, okay, click open. Upload this file. Okay. Lepas tu kita try whether it's work or not. Save and return to course. Okay. So kita try eh. Uh, it works. Macam tu. Mm. Very mm. easy. Okay. So that your elite will look presentable lah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, okay. Boleh guna GIF file ke? Ataupun JPEG je ke? GIF, GIF tak pernah try. Tapi kita boleh try. Uh, but so far, I haven't tried G file. Mungkin mm. boleh rasanya. Mm. Okay, alright. Uh, anything else that you like to ask? Z, hello Z. Yes. yes. Z, uh, hari tu aku ada cuba mula mind map. Okay. Mm. And then uh, after I did a few, uh, tapi I'm not sure nya sebut boleh orang lain boleh le eh, boleh uh, sambungkan my map ya my mind map ya tambah or anything uh -huh. but i don't know from the side of the student whether they can really add to that mind map or not maksudnya uh, yang mind map tu after i post uh -huh. it on the on the page kan on the subject uh -huh. uh, page i'm not sure how Student I nak ajar pun tak tahu. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure how they can uh, tambah kepada mind map tu. Sebab dalam dia punya, bila you click mind map tu, the information mm -hmm. yang beri pada uh, other, others can add to the mind map. Macam ni. Oh, okay. To be honest, I haven't tried uh, that activity yet, mind map. Uh, maybe Dr. Terry ada something yang you tahu about this mind map? Um, uh, you want to allow student to add on to the mind map, kan? Yeah, Is it? Oh, that's I what think, I meant. Uh, inside the setting, yeah. I think I have to check in the setting. Lah. Is it allow for other contributors to add on to the mind map? Uh, so okay. usually a student. Lah. Uh, okay. Mungkin dekat setting tu. Kena All enable. Right. Okay, I will All check right. later. Lah. Yeah. Alright, sorry ya, uh, Dr. Raha, I haven't tried the mind map yet. Tak apa. Okay, alright. But uh, Dr. Terry, I would like to ask about attendance. Attendance ni kita link dengan QR attendance kita ke macam mana? Oh, oh the attendance is uh, specific. 
just it's not linked to the QR. But okay. let's say let's say you wanna have you wanna use Elite punya attendance system. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, you can and use that and then bila student either you not check manually dalam Elite tu or you not student to log in and register themselves that they attended for that session. Uh, okay, okay. Actually, ada my diff different feature lah of the attendance. Yeah, yeah, different feature. Itulah, I, I have tried uh, hari tu, tapi macam memang tak link, so I think that there's no point I'm using it. Okay, hmm. so it is good feature. Mungkin kita kalau tak buat kelas uh, synchronous, mungkin kita boleh guna attendance tu. Kalau kita guna kelas synchronous, so we just open up our QR attendance. Okay. Hmm. Alright. So, I think... Okay. That's it that I would like to explain about new features. Hello Z, boleh dengar tak? Yes, boleh. Z, kalau yang ke sebelah kiri tu ada content bank tu, content bank tu kita boleh letak apa-apa tu? Content bank? Ha, tu. Okay. Hmm, kalau you nak letak anything, boleh juga letak kat sini. Tapi kalau tak ada, tak perlu kot, I think. Content bank. Saya pun tak tahu apa untuk apa ni. Dr. Terry tahu tak apa benda content bank? Uh, content bank ni, uh, you can you wanna upload some uh, macam HTML activity or files lah yang nak dipakai kemudian. Uh, okay. Yes, Tapi you can upload just, first. Just, just, okay. You can upload first, then you connect later, <laughs> then you put your elite page. So it's just st storing purpose lah? Yeah, storing purpose Sorry, for the sure. course lah. Uh, so hmm. student tengok ke tak boleh tengok? Ah, tak boleh, tak boleh. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it's just for your, for you to use bila you nak arrange the content dalam Elite nanti. Well, this is macam our cloud storage in Elite lah. Yeah. Okay, alright, thank you. And as you can see here, if you want to get the mobile app, you just can click here, get the mobile app. Kita try eh. Z? Yes? Uh, uh, Panjang baru Z. Apa ni, uh, kalau based on yang ellipse uh, lama, the old ellipse, dia ada okay. indication of the apa kita punya activity, whether kita dah uh, apa uh, achieve the minimum uh, apa ni uh, activity uh, all those apa kita masukkan dalam tu. Yang ini ada lah, kat mana saya tak wasan lah. The new one. Uh, activity tadi, uh, yeah. kita in our part or student part? No, I mean uh, kita punya part, normally kan kita nak letakkan soalan apa like resource, kita punya uh, activity kena assessment tu kan dia ada minimum number berapa kali ah, semua tu kan. Ah, dah bintang-bintang tu. Ah, bintang-bintang tak kisahlah tapi tapi okay. I mean untuk achieve, sometimes kalau kita tak achieve tu mungkin kita tak tahu sama ada kita dah dah achieve tak. Uh, the new one ni saya tak pasang kat mana tu. Oh, ada ke? Uh, if I'm not mistaken hari tu Dr. Terry cakap still in progress ke? Betul ke Dr. Terry? Ah uh, yes, <laughs> we 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 we're still trying to find a new way to to show that that uh the progress lah the, the not so achievement the the statistics lah the uh. how many assignment dah upgraded how many uh re learning resources dah diletak how many yes. activities dipakai yes. uh, ah yeah. but so far but in general we actually have a uh, statistic dah ada just that how to present it. Um, kita belum figure out lah what's the proper way to use uh, use that feature in this in the new elip. Uh, yeah. uh, Because the, the the old one kita boleh nampak dia biru ke kuning. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, dia hijau ke si kuning kan? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so this one kita tak nampak lagi kan? Uh, belum so, belum. Yeah. Nanti uh, nanti kita tengah tengah usaha ni. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kan tengah usaha. Nanti, takut nanti until the end of the semester kita tak realise eh. Masa belum cukup. So nanti Z pula yang kelengkap kan? Oh. <laughs> okay. Alright. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. I heard that uh, this new elite uh, susah nak customize. Belum, uh, apa tu, team dia susah nak customize sikit eh. And they are working towards that lah. Hmm. Uh. Okay, belum that's keluar bintang lah tu, Z. Si, kita si empat tangga lah bintang-bintangnya. Uh, uh, for the time being, cannot. Hmm. For now, not yet. But soon lah, we, we tengah tu. Tengah sediakan that picture. <laughs> Sediakan yeah. Terry, we want to see the stars. <laughs> <laughs> ya, yeah, suka yes. bintang. <laughs> Tanya sikit ni, kalau kita buat uh, forum kan, kan ada satu mm -hmm. bahagian tu yang kita letak forum. Kenapa okay. every time students uh, respond to the forum, dia masuk dalam kita punya email lah. Jadi email kita terlalu banyak lah. Eh, iya ke? Saya tak ada pun. Oh, okay. 
Okay, if that's the case kan, you have to turn off the notification lah yang student uh. in the setting of that forum tool. Uh, you have to disable that feature lah, notification, notification. feature. Notification. Yeah. Uh -huh. Alright, speaking of notification, okay, this new Elip also uh, senang kalau kita nak notify, for example, kita baru add activity kan, okay, edit, okay, notification, okay, kita boleh notify student that we have uh, just uploaded a new activity, alright, and then we can just send comment and then click send. Okay, this is a new feature juga lah, uh, apa tu, advanced notification, okay. And then Another, the yes. Okay, uh, then the feature will the notification will send to the student punya Unimas email lah. Mm -mm. Uh, Unimas email. Uh, and notification to us tu, student respond dia kita tak nak dia notification kepada kita. Ah, yang mana satu? Takkan tadi kalau student respond on the forum okay. dia akan masuk okay. ke kita punya uh, email. Macam mana okay. kita nak disable notification tu supaya dia tak masuk email kita? Oh, okay. It, okay, dalam uh, dalam the forum setting. The, forum setting. Uh, forum tool setting. You, uh, there's a option lah to do not receive notification. Uh, if if ada yang if ada student yang post something in the forum. Uh, that's one way is from that. Another way is you can go to that forum. You you turn off not to receive notification. Mana satu eh? Okay, cuba you pergi kat forum ni, cuba you disable kan? Ah, this one, subscription, subscription and tracking, this one. Okay. Ah, optional subscription. Mungkin Mr. I punya auto subscription kot. Ya, yeah, kan. So, usually if by default, ya, yeah, dia akan automatic subscribe optional. lah. Ah. Hmm, okay. Alright, okay. But so far for me, memang tak ada dalam email lah. Alright, can we move on? Ada satu lagi saya lupa. Okay, we have um, apa tu? New course content display option. Okay, like this one saya guna by week. Okay, for example kita boleh klik sini and then edit setting. Okay, go to edit setting. Lepas tu kita pergi dekat course format. Kita boleh tukar. Okay, uh, this one, my one is going doing topic format. Kalau nak guna tile format and so on, you guys boleh uh, try to uh, explore. Okay, for example, I would like to use tile format. Okay, tile format. Lepas tu, kita boleh pick new icon. I'm just using this pie chart and then colorful tile. Mungkin saya akan tukar uh, ni. Light blue. Okay, and save and return. Nak tengok macam mana rupa dia. Uh, this is tile format. Yeah, I think this one is better for the students sebab... Uh, Dia tak tengok semua sekali dalam satu, bila dia buka elip, semua week keluar itu agak membebankan sebab ia akan makan banyak data student. So by using this one, tiles format which is good for me, diorang boleh select kalau week satu, diorang akan view week satu. So data tu tak banyak sangat uh, makan from the student punya data. Okay. So klik ni baru nampak yang week tu punya. Alright. So... You see here, kita ada feedback one, file one. So, dia akan tulis berapa URM, URL dua ada assignment satu. So, it is easier for student to look at lah kalau dia tengok, okay, week two ada assignment satu, ada URL kena tengok, ada dua. Which is good. Okay. Alright. So, anything else that you like to try lagi? Kejap eh, saya try lagi satu. Pergi dekat course format. Okay, kita nak try topics format. Okay, for example, topics format. Okay, set and return. Alright, this is how it looks like. Tapi yang ni macam saya cakap tadi, bila student buka je elip you guys, dia akan makan banyak data lah sebab semua benda akan load at the same time. Topic 1 until topic 14. Okay, lagi apa lagi yang saya suka guna hari tu eh. Edit setting, course format, uh, maybe try button format. Macam mana rupa button format? Set and return. Macam sama je button format. So dia tak ada uh, Mungkin Z kena oh. tengok daripada view student kot. Baru yes. nampak. Hmm? Thank you. Ah, ni. Satu 
ni pun bagus juga so that student tak perlu nak buka semuanya waktu ni for week 2 ni for week 3 week 3 ni tak ada apa-apa so dia tak boleh tekan lagi mungkin this one is hidden from Zee, student ni tadi yes sorry, Zee. ini tadi pakai tiles eh ah uh, di button oh button yes button format Okay, yang dalam add block tu ke Z? Ah tak, ni sini. Ah wait ah, saya return to my normal role. Turn editing on kat sini, kat sini. Lepas tu uh -huh. klik ni, setting ni. Oh, klik. Kita, kita, kita. Ah, okay. Yes. Edit uh -huh. setting. Edit. Aha. Uh -huh. Lepas tu go to course format. Hmm. Course format. Ah ni, okay. tengok ada button format. And you guys eh. can uh, explore on your own here, ya? Yeah? Eh, kenapa I punya macam tak ada ni? <laughs> eh, ada. Uh, view, yes. view. Kami punya pun tak ada. Lain. Eh, tak ada. Ada oh, tiga saya aja. pun tak ada. Ada tiga eh. option. Tiga option? Kenapa? Kami tak ada yang color-color tu, Z. Color mana? Eh, peliknya. Uh, oh, you can put the hidden section. Cost layout. Pemenang elip je ada. Ada. <laughs> Lampau. Ah, ni Encik Azhar cakap ada. Oh, kena ni. turn on editing dulu. Kena turn on editing dulu. Yeah. I just turn on editing and then pergi ke apa nama ni, button atas tu kan. Uh, edit setting. Edit setting and edit. then. Edit setting. Lepas tu pergi bawah sampai jumpa course format ni. Ah, okay. Right. Ah, and ni. then format. format Ah, okay. Ada? Ada, ah. ada. 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 Kalau hak ada? Siapa lagi cakap tak ada tadi? Ada, 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 ada. Ada, <laughs> ya. Yeah. Kan pemenang elit saya ada ya. Kesian. Boy. Kesian <laughs> kah kena fitnah. Alright. I, the buttons are disabled while the edit mode is active. I. So that means Kalau, that kena off dulu lah baru nampak. Yes. Kena uh, switch role to student baru nampak. No, even if you are in your own role pun nampak juga. Ah, okay. Tapi okay. you have to click off you punya editing on the. You have to be right. off mode. <laughs> okay, alright. I think saya dah terlebih masa dah ni. Okay. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate all the question. Okay, sama-sama kita belajar. Oh, is there anything uh, that you guys want to add? Ada siapa-siapa lagi yang nak share pasal new features yang saya tak explain tadi? Uh, okay, I just want to add one thing. Just now about okay. the progress bar kan. Uh, okay. If, if yes. you want to track student progress bar and you want to ask Elite to help track it, so mm -hmm. you can go to any of the resources or activity. Okay. Zee boleh, boleh, uh, boleh uh, pergi. Uh. Activity ni. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, yeah, right. You have to enable edit lah. Kena turn on editing dulu. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh. Turn okay. on. Turn, turn, turn editing, editing on. on. Okay. okay. Go to this activity. Okay. Go to edit, right. ed, 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 edit the activity. Alright. Uh. Go, go to the, go to the wheel here on the right, on the right. Okay. The the on the wheel, button. wheel, cock wheel, the setting button. Uh, the On the right side. Yeah, this one, this one. Okay. Okay. Yes, edit setting. Edit setting. Okay. If you want to track your student progress, can ah, uh, you have to go down here, go to the list, uh, okay. activity completion. Uh, All right. So, okay. so, so this one different, different tool have a different, a bit, a bit different lah the setting. But this is the one that you're gonna set. Uh, okay. whether you want to track the activity completion or not. Ah. ah, so if the student do this activity, then you contribute to the progress bar. I so see. The overall progress bar. So, uh, so this one is very important lah, mm -hmm. if you want to track the. So activity. we click enable here. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. yeah. Uh, this one. Uh, this. Unlock. Yes. Go. Ah. Uh, uh, student can manually mark the activity. Okay. Can you okay. click on the drop down menu? The student can manually. Ah, uh, there are op there are different option lah. This one. Okay. Can, can click so on which it. one? Which one? This one eh. Student yes, can yes. manually mark. Ah, uh, can you okay. click on it? Where's Z? Boleh click on it. I think she clicked, but we couldn't see. Oh, couldn't. Oh, see. Only oh. she can see. Oh, okay. Save okay. and return to course eh. Yeah, save and display pun boleh. Save to return. Uh, okay. You can set lah whether you wanna you want student to check as complete or you, student can do the activity, then it will be complete. Ah, uh, mm. so. Ah. Uh, 
Then oh, we contribute uh, to the progress bar. Okay. Uh, Z or Terry, yang tadi kan uh, earlier on Z ada cakap yang apa head map ya? Yeah? Heat map. Heat map. Hmm. Uh, itu uh, yang heat map ya. Yeah? Di bawah mana tadi ya? Yeah? Block. Yeah, at a block. At, at block. block, okay. Yeah. So that one we will be able to see the student they whether they read our posting or the yeah. resource that we posted or not, ya? Eh? Ah, uh, yeah. Tapi saya lagi suka yang mana tadi ya eh? kejap. Mana kita dah letak tadi? Yang ni saya lebih suka. Eh mana tadi yang student progress tu? At a block, uh, course com completion status tu tak sila. Oh, and this one. Yeah. Completion progress. Mm -hmm. Ah, this mm -hmm. one made the lagi best. Okay, kita boleh view student seorang-seorang dia orang dah boleh dah tengok ke tak? Oh, ini mm. di ini add block ke apa? Ah, add a block. Ah, uh, course completion. Oh, completion course progress. Completion, completion progress. Ah. ah, yang ni Abdul Hakim ni dia tak pernah buka ilip. Tak pernah <laughs> view pun. Ah, so dah tentu ada kat sini. Oh, senang so, lah track mereka lah sekarang. Yes, Adrena pun activity tree dia tak completed semua. Okay. Right. okay. Z, yes. kalau yang kita nampak progress ni yang kosong ni kan? Aha. Apa kita nak buat Z? Nak hukum dia ke apa ke macam mana? It is up to you. Uh, so, no, how does that, I mean, uh, affected uh, Ilip. Mungkin Toke Ilip boleh jawab Terry. Macam mana Terry? Yeah, progress bar, progress dia akan affect lah kan Terry. Progress yeah, progress. Ah, uh, the progress will be affected. And then you, you also tells us that like, oh, this student tak participate in this activity that you said. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. so so you can see lah which student yang tak participate and which student mm -hmm. yang yang selalu yang always participate yang ataupun yang tak participate lah. Ah. Uh, a decision whether that, nak yes. uh, uh -huh. whether you nak bagi penalty kat student tu it is up to the instructor sendirilah mm -hmm. uh, but it's just to help them to see lah uh, the mm -hmm. overall performance of the student in the class yeah. this uh, the theory this one they detect whether the student like if we put resources eh, they detect the student uh, open it or download it is it is it that kind of thing uh, You, you remember just now the completion completion uh, feature dalam each tool tu? Yes. Uh, you, you have to enable it lah if you're on the track. Yeah, yes, you yes, I do. Uh, if you want to, you want to, if you're on the track where the student read the the article or the page that you give. Yeah. Uh, the video, uh, you have to enable that one so that it will appear in here lah and it will be tracked in this uh, completion okay. progress. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Maybe next time during the class, you can show this to the student. You see, I yeah. can track yeah. your progress here. Yeah. Yes. yes. Ni ya, uh, Adrina ni tak tak buka pun ilip. Uh, macam tu. Uh -huh. So okay. like, uh, like Haslina said just now, say if you want to give, you know, bantu the student. Uh, you don't just give simply give a plus one mark just to up the grade. Maybe you can see here or mm -hmm. whether oh they are very quite active actually. Maybe I can help out, tambah up, push up uh, one grade for this student because they are active in class. Uh, yes. So this one can help you decide lah this this data here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any more question before we uh, invite Mr. Yao Chongli to share to to have his uh, sharing session? Ada? Okay. Uh, Z, Mr. Z, Z, Yao. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, regarding apa ni? Yang ni apa? Uh, this apa indication apa progress ni? Uh, okay. Bagus juga ni. Tapi. Yeah. Uh, dia apply untuk activity ke apa activity? Uh, ini untuk semua. Semua. Uh, semua. 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 Resource. Even video that you put here, also you can actually enable yes. tracking. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, yani the whole, the whole uh, course lah ni. Ah, uh, the, the mm -hmm. whole course, but yeah, to because, make sure. Because yeah. dia ada section kecil-kecil ni, saya nampak ni uh, satu uh -huh. setiap bar tu dia ada, dia ada portion kecil-kecil kan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Betul. This so bagaimana I... itu untuk untuk every activity dalam dalam khusus tu. Yes. yes. Dalam page. Uh, activity or okay. uh, resources. Okay. Uh, even ass assessment yang quiz quiz tu, I will will be will be track here lah. Uh. Okay. This yang ni dia view untuk week satu tu dalam satu block tu saja. Yang ni untuk week dua. You see here lecture note sampai 
feedback for week two saja. Okay, 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 I see. Z, uh, thank you, thank you. yes. Uh, sorry, on still on that matter. So okay. I was trying to add that on mm -hmm. my, for example lah, on my, apa nama ni, I nak tengok berapa orang yang dah baca, let's say lah, my course, uh, uh, apa tu, plan kan. Mm -hmm. I put that progress, uh, uh, tadi tu kat situ ke, atau macam mana ya, how do I add it? Saya honestly tak buat macam tu, dia dah ada dekat sini. Tadi pun saya baru tahu bila Dr. Terry explain. But this one, saya tak letak uh, completion progress. Dekat uh, sebab I try to click, uh, mm -hmm. apa, add, Uh, add block tu kan, I click mm -hmm. on that uh, completion progress, tapi I tak tahu dia pergi mana. Eh? <laughs> so, okay. do I have to, do I have to edit it in, apa nama ni, in any activities that I posted or in any resources that I posted ke atau macam mana tu ya? Because my one here, tak ada pun letak setting tu, dia automatic ada dekat sini. You have to go okay. to participant, is it? Uh, kejap eh, macam mana saya buat tadi Kejap, kejap Ni, pergi dekat Ni, yeah. completion progress yeah. Saya letak eh, atas sikit eh Overview of student ada tak? Madam nampak Overview of student, pergi ke ha. participant ke? Bukan, so, bukan Dia akan, uh, you, dia you akan to... automatically Yes You have to go to the course page Your course page punya tu Oh, uh -huh. kena pergi course page tak? Uh, kena pergi course page dulu I pergi dekat, okay let's say lah in my uh, course in directing ni, I dah kat directing punya course page ni. Okay, uh, then, you, then you you go to the arrow here. Uh, the mana blue, arrow? The blue arrow, the blue arrow on the screen. Uh, the yes, me? yes. The, okay, Z. Okay, okay, Z, okay, right uh, you, you, you go to your course page. Post page, uh, okay. Okay, right. uh, and then Need only, the only yes, the other one, that blue box. Yes, that, okay. So you click on it, uh, then you can access the progress, the one, completion, completion progress. Uh, oh, that, uh, overview of students. Okay. Yes, so you can only access from the course page, baru ada this block up here. Uh, once you click on it, then the block, uh, you click on it, overview of students. Okay. Apa tak, madam? Ah, uh, then you go to this page. Overview of student. Hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I have to slowly figure that out. <laughs> okay. okay. Alright. Tapi, so, tapi okay. first kena kena add block dulu lah kan? Add the block dulu lah kan? Yes. Yes. Add, add the block add. dulu. Uh. Okay. Okay. So banyak lagi features dalam ni yang you guys can uh, explore on your own. Okay. Yes. Banyak. Right. Even ada analytics, learning analytics mah. Hmm. Deep class. Alright, ah uh, kita dah terlebih masa. Alright, ah uh, I would like to invite ah uh, Mr Yao Chong Li ah uh, to have ah uh, his sharing session about ah uh, uh, the teaching awards yang dia dah menang hari tu. Okay, ah uh, Mr Yao, are you ready now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining and thank you for come to come and Z for inviting. So today I'm going to share on what I did for the transformative teaching. Uh, for me, it is actually about impactful changes that you done, you have done to address your students' need. So basically, that is the idea about transformative teaching. Um, some contacts. So this sharing is actually extracted from my team's participation mm -hmm. in Teaching Excellent Awards. Uh, at faculty and university level. Uh, it's actually a humble sharing from what I did for my film seminar course. And I would like to special thanks to Dr. Samia, my colleagues, and also the students, because it is actually a long and daunting process in compiling a lot of evidences in order to fill in the form and also to submit all the needed materials to come and uh, to anyone that will be evaluating what I had submitted to them. So I would say you need at least few uh, days to compile a, a lot of things for that. Uh, not to scare you off, no worry. I will just share whatever I, I have done for this. Okay, basically what is transformative teaching? It refers to uh, changes or transformation that you have done on your teaching method in order to enhance students' participation and achievement. So your targets here, the keyword here is changes and the impactful uh, outcome that you had done uh, so that you can actually help your students to 
uh, having active participation in your teaching and learning process. And for sure, it shouldn't be a lecture-based teaching. It means you are not there only talk, 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 or you know, chalk and talk kind of lectures-based teaching, but it has to be something that outside of the box. So it has to be effective and help the student to engage with your teaching and learning process through interactive and a learning experience. So the keywords for you to bring home with will be changes that you have to conduct on your classes and that will be able to engage a student through active participation and learning and it has to be impactful in a sense. So what does it mean by changes and impactful is or it has to be uh, reflected through your evidences. So here uh, I will share with you my uh, portfolio later. Uh, so these are the evaluation criteria that basically is what you need to fill in and you need to uh, hit on so that you can uh, inform the jury or the judges about what you had done for your courses. Okay, uh, the, the first one will be rationale. Rationale means uh, what, are, what, what are the justification for you to do such changes? So you need to have a strong justification on why you are doing such changes on your teaching method in order to address certain needs. Okay, so the rationale will be about 10 marks and then approaches that you have taken in order for you to, uh, uh, to address the needs of your students or the situation that in need of such changes. And then uh, how did that changes actually encourage students' involvement? It will be another 30 marks. And the last one will be impacts on students' learning. That means, uh, yeah, as you can see here, it's like what kind of changes you have done, your approaches, and why after you have done the changes, did the student's involvement improve or enhance? And then what kind of impacts that you can actually uh, tangibly see from those changes that you have done? This is the uh, web page from CALM where you can actually go inside and see, uh, you can just type transformative teaching on CALM and Unimas. You will be able to be led to this page. And when you're in this page, you will be seeing uh, Z faces and just scroll down more and you'll be able to see uh, this Anugra Pengajaran Transformative means is a uh, award for transformative teaching. Uh, I had already extracted the content for you to read just now. It's really about transformation and then uh, it's about the changes of your teaching method and it shouldn't be uh, lecture based. Okay, and you can click on the links here for you to download the description, the, the, the form and also uh, the checklist, whatever materials or documents that you need to uh, send in to come for them to evaluate your, uh, your changes or your transformation teaching. Okay, I will go into these uh, criteria. This is the so-called uh, the, the criteria that I mentioned just now. So basically, you need to provide them with your rationale, your, your reasonings, and then the approaches they are taken, and then the students' involvement, and later on to uh, the impact that you had to your students. So basically, keterlibatan pelajar dan impact ke atas pembelajaran pelajar is really about what kind of changes have you observed in terms of students' cognitive, affective, and psychomotor skills, uh, and how their social skills have improved throughout. So those are the Im impacts that you need to collect. That means when you are teaching, right, you need to design a way for you to collect those data along the way. Okay, so there is a very important thinking that you need to have. It's, it's not that you are only doing teaching, then you do your activities and that's it. No, you have to think of how can I actually evaluate the changes that have been uh, done uh, and the student had, uh, did they gain something out of your teaching and learning process. So you need to be prepared to compile a lot of data throughout the process. Okay, so uh, this is uh, the so-called borang penyertaan. I will just scroll up first. Uh, basically, these are the logistic stuff that you need to clear off, either is individual or berkumpulan. And my one is berkumpulan. I'm pairing up with uh, Dr. Miao Li because we run a mini film festival. She was the director for mini film festival last year. So my uh, participations are mainly about uh, how I use a uh, mini film festival to uh, gouge the students uh, active participations and they learn through organizing and having good discourse about film and film related events. So the, these are the things that you need to fill up over here. Uh, then rationale, as I mentioned, why you are doing that. I will show you my portfolio very, very soon, but basically this is the form that you need to uh, fill in and the you know, philosophy behind why you are doing this. 
and then the approaches that you have taken, okay, so pendekatan, and lastly, uh, your students' uh, involvement, or no, that is the second last, student involvement, and then the last one, uh, the impact towards your students. Okay, so you just need to fill in a lot of questions over here, and uh, yeah, you need to sign and then get your, uh, the dean to sign for you, and you can submit to become. Okay, I will show you my portfolio at the, uh, now. So as you could see, uh, this is a portfolio that I actually submit to uh, come. Uh, so I will introduce my project. My project is called Mini Film Festival, part under uh, this course, uh, film seminar course. Uh, I will tell them what I did for them. Okay, so for your information, Mini Film Festival had been there for many, many years. Uh, it had been physically formed, but last year we had to convert it entirely to online form and it has to it has become the first uh, film festival in Malaysia that managed to convert into uh, online festival last year so uh, you need to highlight things that you you know uh, is something that is special for your uh, for your teaching methods again uh, what kind of activities that you had under these uh, uh, projects like for example I have Dudu Dan Tonton I have webinars I have mini film festival weeks together with my students and my colleagues Okay, and uh, some uh, evidences from elsewhere, like you know, newspaper cutting, uh, that you can prove that you have done all these kind of things. It's not that you are saying it from the air, but you have evidences elsewhere from newspaper cutting, from you know, online news or uh, things like this. Okay, so you have yeah, these are all the evidences I can compile. And then I also show things like what I did with the students, like we have, you know, uh, design posters in order to, you know, uh, encourage participation, not only from our own student, but uh, student inside Unimas, also publics. So for information, you really need to know what kind of changes uh, or an impact you had. Like, for example, I know for, throughout the events for Mini Film Festival or Duda Dan Ton Ton and Webinar, we had more than 5,000 audience participated throughout. So it's a big figures that you can actually show to people on like by doing all these events, actually it's not only you know doing for your sukha suka you know, for your class only, but you can actually gain so much things out of it. And we have international collaboration. For example, the second webinar was actually a, an international collaboration with uh, people from Thailand, from Myanmar, from Indonesia from Singapore, for instance, so that I, I bring these people to talk about regional film festival go online. As you know, we have went through a very tough year of COVID-19 because COVID-19 has affected the way we live our life. Also, we run our education. So does our production and our film festival. That's why my first two webinars focus on how people run their production, film production during COVID-19. So I invited guests who really know uh, how to do production during COVID-19. So that was my first topic for webinar. And it's a very timely topic. It's actually in June 16, when you know a lot of people still don't know how to do production during COVID-19 time. And these people had already involved in projects that they go for production. And I want to have this topic because I want to help my students to get ideas of, because they have their final year project. So around this time, they will be running their final year project, means they have to go and shoot their film. So I want them to learn from the expert. So these professionals in the field, that how did they do that? Uh, so I, I, I run this thing because I felt that there is a need for me to address that to my students. And yeah, so these are some of the examples. Uh, like, and I, my rationale behind like why, why MFX is important and I, I, I highlight things we are so far away from the center for, for Malaysia, from, uh, from Malaya, from Kuala Lumpur, right? It's like, you know, 978 kilometers away from KL. And most of the time, our film events are centered in Kuala Lumpur. It's very hard for us to have any film festival or film related event or discourse or forum organized physically in Sarawak. So what I did for this class is I try my very best to bring everything I could from scratch uh, together with the students and lecturers and colleagues to organize over here in Unimas and also outside of Unimas. So you, you need to have a very strong reason behind what happened and, you know, uh, most of the time, university or colleges in uh, Malaya, they, it's very easy for them to invite guests. Uh, they can bring their filmmakers to go to Aswara, UITM, for instance, but it's very hard for us because we need to fly them in and that already uh, incur costs. So you need to have rationale behind why you are doing this uh, and you spend so much time doing all these kind of things. 
Okay, uh, yeah, you need to put in your philosophy of teaching uh, and what kind of approaches that you have taken so that you can engage a student and also, uh, okay, the impacts, uh, can generate impacts, not only to your student, but also to the public, for instance. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, then I, 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 I attach photos uh, of things, uh, even evidences of my chat with my student, because I, I, I have run through massive amount of time with student to do consultation. Like I have Koto Unit MFF, I have Panamitan MFF, I have Competition Unit MFF. All these kind of things I have been doing it with students, which I spent massive amount of time together with the students that I can show to the jury that these are the things that I've done with the students. Okay, and I try to create a sense of belongings with the students and I let them participate in contributing ideas and I want them to feel that their ideas are being appreciated like using uh, Padlet, for instance, and then they throw in the idea they want to invite these people, these people, why, why do you want, want to, to invite? And I will talk to them, okay, this person is actually interesting target to, to suggest, and why, why, why? So I will go through that kind of process with students. Okay, there are a lot of reasonings, writings, and photos that you can attach to show to your jury uh, what have you done, uh, like, you know, uh, encourage uh, these courses a debate about film, discussion about film, for example. And then I have this session that learn from the experts, like right? the hospital and also the webinar session and snapshot it down, uh, people that are invited. So these are the things. Like, it's really a real scale project. So all MFF week events were brought online uh, throughout MCO and CMCO with more than 5,000 viewership coming from both students and general publics. So these are the events that we had on Eventbrite. Uh, I would say a lot of events that I, I plan with students throughout the process it is a super, super tough process, which you during this time around, I will only have very little sleep of maybe four, three hours per day. But yeah, the impact can be very huge if you really plan it well together with students and students are willing to learn together with you and you know grow and you know, together with you. Uh, so I also include the student feedback and reflections. So I, I, I had it on Padlet and also Flipgrid, for example. I took the, took the evaluation reflections out. Uh, then, yeah, so basically these are the things. And then the students' uh, report that you can attach down there later. So basically these are the things that I compiled for, for this. I'm uh -huh. impressed by your video. <laughs> Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you, girl. Uh, honestly, I spent a lot of time for to compile this portfolio, uh, but most of the thing I had it already in the locker, or you know, somehow it's already there. Just that I need to harness them out to put inside the portfolio. Uh, I, I I remember at that time I was actually having my short holiday in Terengganu. Uh, I was a I was going for my diving trip, and at that time. Early morning, every day, I will make sure I work out around four o'clock in the morning, and I will spend about three hours per day to do the document compilation for like at least five to one week's time, until around nine o'clock, eight o'clock, and nine o'clock, I will go down to the uh, to the beach, and then I will go to dive. <laughs> so that was a very memorable uh, uh, time for me, and I really thank so to Dr. Salmia, and who has been pushing me to do this, because she, she said that Chong, you had done a lot of things. You just need to compile your evidences and then you can, you know, who knows, you will win something. I, I never expected to win, honestly, uh, particularly for Magu, uh, because when I was, I got invited, I actually don't feel like wanting to go. So I, I was having that kind of feeling. Uh, but yeah, thanks thanks for uh, to, to Dr. Saumia to encourage uh, me to do this uh, tough process. And I would like to uh, how to call it, summarize what I said to you in Irene. <laughs> These are the keywords that I felt important in order for you to hit uh, transformative teaching. Irene is actually a uh, Greek words that refer to peace. Uh, it's actually a name uh, of a uh, goddess of peace in Greek. Uh, but uh, I also put it down as evidences. means you need to compile evidences that uh, of your teaching which are impactful with real or genuine intention and approach to address students' class uh, needs. So that's why it's called Irene. Uh, for me, whenever you have 
done anything. I believe a lot of us uh, teaching in this faculty have done a lot of things, either Chipta, uh, what, um, Fakawi, you know, all these kind of things. We have done a lot, uh, Ichitra, a lot of things that we have been doing. So just that you need to turn it into to suit your CLO. So very importantly, you have evidences that will impact toward your achieving your CLO uh, with real and genuine intention and approaches that address the need like your CLO and why there is a need that you need to do so. So whenever you have these, then you are all set. So I guess uh, that will be what I would like to share with you. It's a very short one. So if you have any question, uh, you, please feel free to ask. I will try my best to answer your question. Okay, any question, anyone? Uh, I don't have questions, but I would like to add on to Chong's presentation. Yeah, I think I do agree with Chong uh, that we, we have uh, uh, lots of events and I believe all the lecturers in FSDK uh, have a good uh, teaching and learning approach with the students. It's just that I don't know what hinder you guys from uh, trying to apply for this teaching and learning awards. So maybe you feel like it's uh, a bit overwhelmed that you need to compile all the evidence and to prepare your portfolio and whatnot. But I think uh, if you uh, compile it properly uh, throughout the semester, you wouldn't have a problem if you want to submit for these uh, awards. Because like Chong, like Z, I know they are very organized. Uh, even without the awards, they already start compiling uh, the students' work in a very systematic way. I think that is uh, the things that help us in preparing this portfolio. Mm. Mm. And most importantly, whatever that you are doing, right, it must really help you to achieve the COO of the class. So mm. let's say your COO is not really for an event. Don't try to create an event just because you want to win the award, but because your COO got something to do with, uh, like for example, uh, participating and organizing film related event. That is one of my COO. I'm very sure that I need to have something like that. So I make sure in my class, I coach my students from zero until they can really run an event together with me. Even though I'm not teaching uh, you know, art, uh, art management or, you know, any, any kind of courses like that. But I know that I need to coach my student in order for them from zero, uh, writing press release, uh, doing promotion on social media, uh, having competition, call for competitions, inviting juries, inviting panelists, everything I would say is really, really a lot of works to do. But I felt that my students really learn a lot from me. Uh, sometimes they complain like, well, banyak lah kerja, sir. But afterwards, they will felt that they are here not only learning to become a filmmaker, but they also given the option to learn something else besides being a filmmaker. They can be a film curator. They can be a film programmer. They can be a festival programmer. They can also become an organizer for an event. Uh, they know how to do design. They know how to do uh, copywriting, write for press release, for instance. So it's a, really a package of everything. If they go out from this, if they really learn best, passionately from me together, I believe they actually, yeah, they have more options other than being a filmmaker out there. So yeah, that, that is what I try to do in my class. So that's why I end my um, presentation with this uh, Antoine uh, quote. Uh, he's actually a French Literatures, uh, children literatures uh, books. If you know uh, the Little Prince, and he wrote this: If you want to build a ship, don't drum up people to collect wood, and don't assign them tasks and works, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. Means you want them to long for desire for something that they can gain out of the teaching activities that you offer them. It's not that because for marks or you know, because you want to have a successful event, but it is something that they will be able to learn after they've done so, much, so many things together with you. So I guess that's all from my sharing. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Mr. Yao Chong Li, for the uh, very inspiring sharing session that uh, my hope that after this, uh, 
can be an eye opener for the other lecturers in the faculty to properly document that, uh, everything and then uh, just try try to uh, submit your uh, nomination and then who knows you might win and then you get a very good recognition okay yeah. all right so Shahaz, are you not pergi dulu ke macam tak sabar-sabar aja cik as ni like because uh, i'm not really well prepared like chong and you z because i think i just uh, sharing session what whatever that i have uh, so boleh ke? Yeah, dah. Tak apa. Boleh, silakan, boleh, silakan. boleh. Silakan, Encik Has. Alright. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good morning to everyone. Okay, so I hope you guys are doing well and fine. Okay, uh, I feel like I don't deserve actually to, to apa ni, uh, uh, share, to have this sharing session as a teaching uh, award winner. Sebab is, uh, I, I want it for 2019, saya rasa a bit obsolete sebenarnya but uh, because of the team spirit that we think that uh, we just uh, have it for sharing session with everyone so I'm going to give it a go anyway, right? So let me share my screen. So what is teaching award? Anugerah Pengajaran. Okay, so it's actually aimed to recognize the contribution of Unimas academics who have won exceptional skills and knowledge in using different methods of innovative teaching to enhance student learning experience. So the keywords here is to enhance student learning experience. Okay, the criteria for this award includes sound teaching philosophy and innovative pedagogical practice, excellent documentation of student progress and impact of approaches used, scholarship in teaching and learning leadership and recognition from peers, students, and other stakeholders. So basically, for teaching award, it is more, you need to prepare more on the write-up because it reflects you as an academician uh, more. In compared to transformative teaching or blended learning, it focuses on the, the way you conduct your class, one class. Kan? Ataupun macam tadi Chong, dia pilih satu kursus yang dia apply for, apa ni tadi? Uh, mini film festival okay but teaching award is like uh, you as a whole as an academician okay but the form is not really lengthy for you to fill in it's just that you need to prepare your teaching portfolio okay so these are the example of the form that you need to fill in okay summary of your achievement okay of course they're going to ask about your academic related course okay numbers and recognition of awards, project related to teaching and learning. Um, okay, and then you have to prepare your teaching portfolio that contain all this. Okay, you have to refer to the rubric, whether you are applying for teaching awards or transformative award or blended learning awards, always refer to the rubric. Okay, uh, so that is how you target for your award, right? So, and then, okay, this is the example. So, if you want to view the teaching portfolio clearly through your phone, you can scan this QR code. But anyway, I'm going to show it also on the screen. All right, this is my teaching portfolio. So, bear in mind the content that I've prepared is for 2019 and before that. Okay, um, so first, Thing that you should have is the content in your teaching portfolio. I'm not sure whether you guys have seen it before because I believe Dr. Sal have been forwarded uh, forward uh, this teaching portfolio uh, when she sent an email out to encourage everyone to apply for this award. Okay, so this is what you should have in your teaching portfolio. Your teaching philosophy, strategies in teaching, okay, and you can list out what are the strategies that you applied in your teaching and learning. Okay, assessment strategies that you use, supervision, list of courses taught, okay, creativity and innovation in teaching and learning, evaluating of teaching, student feedbacks, testimonial from peers, okay, improvement in teaching and learning, scholarship in teaching and leadership. Okay, so for introduction, you just introduce yourself as an academician in general, your background, okay, and then your quotes, okay, uh, what do you believe, okay, so um, my quotes is always Ankora in Paro, okay? Uh, I am still learning. Even though we are as an academician, I think we shouldn't stop learning. We are still lacking in every um, knowledge. Sometimes students know better than us, 
So kita jangan anggap we are superior than the students. Okay, there's always uh, a new things that we can learn from our students also from our peers. Okay, so don't stop learning. Okay, so my teaching philosophy, Ankora Imparo means I am still learning. So you have to uh, write down your teaching philosophy. Okay, uh, and then inform what are the teaching and learning theory that you applied in your teaching style. Okay, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, so teaching and learning style, saya tak pernah terfikir pun to tell you honestly yang saya akan guna constructivism lah apalah. Bila saya mengajar, what I have in mind is I want my class to be interactive. Saya nak student saya not only learning in class. Itu yang daripada dulu bila saya mengajar, saya akan fikir, okay, the student should learn beyond the classroom. Okay, learning doesn't have to happen in the classroom. Sebab tu bila kelas-kelas yang saya handle, saya akan buat banyak aktiviti dan bawa student keluar. Sebab itu minat saya. Itu adalah approach saya bila saya mengajar student. So, bila kita buat something tu, is based on our interest. Bukan kita buat, kita aim nak dapat award. I never do something or aim, okay, nak buat ni. Sebab nak target untuk dapat certain award. I think that is the wrong mindset. Uh, so, sebab apa-apa kita buat, kita kena perbetulkan kita punya nawaitu. Kan? So, kita kena niat kita daripada awal, apa yang kita nak buat sebenarnya. Apa yang kita minat. So, saya memang minat buat aktiviti dengan student. So, that's why I plan kelas-kelas yang saya pegang akan ada aktiviti yang keluar. So, bila COVID ni saya macam agak stress sebenarnya sebab student tak ada. Saya don't have any kind of physical activities with student. We cannot go out. So, because saya punya style memang akan keluar. We going to have collaboration with industry. Kita akan bawa student pergi ke field trip. Okay, so that is my style of teaching and learning. So you must know what is your style, the style that you love. And then saya reverse engineering sikit lah. Sebab I'm not really a teaching and learning expert yang tahu pasal different teaching and learning punya apa ni approach kan. Dia ada behaviorism, constructivism. Sebenarnya kita dah belajar semua ni dalam PGD previously. Okay, cuma maybe dah berapa tahun tu kita lupa. Uh, so, buatlah revision balik sebenarnya teaching learning kita ni uh, dia punya keywords tu ke arah kategori yang mana. Okay, you baca definition dia. Behaviorism, constructivism. I think yang terror ni masa kita sama-sama PGD is acong. Uh, saya memang bab-bab teori ni saya kurang sikit learning teori. They call it kan. Uh, saya kurang sikit nak menghafal benda ni. Okay, tahu yang basic-basic je. Okay, so reverse engineering. So you nampak you ni ke arah yang mana. Okay, so and then do a proper write up on that. Kan? Hmm, ah, macam ni saya cakap. Okay, so kalau based on constructivism. Okay, so student are actively engaged on their own learning. So it's more towards student centred. Kalau constructivism ni. Okay. Alright. So teaching strategy. Okay. I use four teaching strategies in my teaching and learning. So interactive and student-centered class activities. I think most of you also apply this uh, strategy in your teaching and learning. Okay. Engaging real world activity. Ini yang saya cakap tadi. Saya suka bawa student keluar. Linkkan dia dengan any talk yang ada di luar. Okay. And then cooperative and collaborative learning. Okay, ni yang mana kalau tengok kelas saya mesti akan ada exhibition. This is to encourage student to be cooperative and do collaborative learning ataupun group work. Okay, and then strategy number four, digital technology tools to support learning. So, uh, I like to explore different tools and technology yang kita boleh apply dalam kelas. Right? Okay, so this four teaching strategies, you can came up with your own. Okay, ataupun you sendiri identify apa yang you dah buat dalam kelas tu is more towards apa. What are the strategies that you normally use in your class? I'm sure you're going to see a pattern in the way that you teach in class. Kan, so you just groupkan dia and then just labelkan dia ikut kesesuaian lah. Okay. And then, okay. For the first one, okay, strategy one. Interactive student-centered class activities. Hands-on learning. Okay, this is for uh, the last time I've taught uh, photography class. Okay, so we going we we always have this tutorial session one not one to one lah. Kita akan buat slot uh, saya dengan Puan Mai. 
Okay, buat slot tutorial untuk pelajar. Okay, so pelajar akan diajar cara-cara untuk pasang lighting and all that. So fully hands on. Okay, and then lepas tu bila pelajar tu dah reti, dia akan ajar student dia yang lain pula. So this is how we encourage uh, learning from peers. Okay, among the students. Kita nak encourage student ni dia ada semangat apa? Serakanan. Kan? Ser, apa betul ke ada keyword? Serakanan. Macam pelik je. <laughs> Keserakanan. Dia kawan. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. Keserakanan kan. Ah, so to help each other kan. Okay. So that is one of the way. And then discussion and presentation. Okay. My class. Um, saya akan make sure bila part discussion tu. Memanglah macam sekolah dulu-dulu. Student akan kena bawa majung paper, sticky note. This is to encourage student to brainstorm dan bergerak di dalam kelas. So that untuk tinggalkan dia punya laptop and all that untuk fokus during the brainstorming session. So encourage discussion and also presentation. Even kita akan ada sesi dalam kelas macam okay you kena today is we going to have a brainstorming session for your project. So dalam group tu dia akan brainstorm dan present dia punya idea in class. So uh, kita akan pergi daripada group ke group dengar dia punya idea. Okay. So creative closure activity. Okay so creative closure activity ni kadang-kadang saya akan buat lepas kita bagi lecture. Okay. Kita akan ada activity at the end of the class. Untuk make sure student faham ke tak. Okay dalam gambar ni uh, example masa ni saya mengajar kelas typography. Uh, I think typography 1 or typography 2. Okay saya tak ingat. Uh, lepas tu kita ajar pasal magazine layout and anatomy. And then saya bawa magazine ke kelas, okay, and then student uh, identify, label uh, the anatomy of the layout. Tengok orang ingat ke tak the, the terminology for the layout. Uh, so that is how I do it for that class to encourage student to participate. Okay, so for strategy number two, engaging real world activity. Okay, so we have collaboration with Nikon for the fourth years, okay, masa ni. So that is how I bring in the expert into my class. Dan kebetulan mula-mula Nikon ni we started as MOU and activity out of class sebenarnya. Okay, then lama-lama kita nampak macam okay, why don't we include it as part as class? Kan, because Nikon datang provide a free uh, training to the student. Diorang bawa masuk expert. Okay and this uh, for this photo uh, dia bawa I can't remember her name Eugene I think uh, expert for food photography okay uh, so I use the opportunity to collaborate with Nikon to benefit the students for the photography class okay and then collaboration with Magic Sarawak Okay, we've managed to collaborate with Magic Sarawak. The first time is the student managed to do a mobile app showcase during the launching of uh, Borneo 744. Okay, and from that point onwards, uh, we managed to have a grill or chill activity where student pitch their mobile apps idea at uh, Magic Sarawak. Okay, so this is how I bring in the expert and uh, have it, uh, you know, give exposure to students so they can uh, have the real world experience. Okay, so dorang macam mana nak pitch at the real audience, ada panel from the industry yang bagi feedback to dia punya project. So it's not the feedback doesn't come only from me but also the expert panel. Okay, and also guest speaker. Uh, for my class, okay, sometimes uh, the guest speaker will come to Unimas or sometimes I will bring in the students to go out to listen to the talk at Magic. Okay. Uh, strategy two, engaging real world activities. Okay, uh, this is what we did. Uh, exhibition. Okay, the reason kenapa saya buat exhibition for students is most of the students bila dia keluar, Dia nak buat resume dan CV. Saya perasan uh, tak ada apa yang nak diletakkan dalam resume ataupun CV pelajar. Kan dia tak pernah jadi apa-apa AJK, dia tak pernah get involved with any exhibition. This is before we had all this. 
So saya terfikir macam okay, one of the way that uh, we can help the student is by having this exhibition also. It's good for their CV. So it shows that you know they can not only they can become a designer, they boleh manage event. You know they have the leadership quality. That is my intention actually to have all these exhibition and also uh, activities with students. Okay. So ISO photography, we have it for four years in a row. Okay, students uh, manage everything. I just supervise. Uh, memang banyak kerja dan penat stay dengan student sampai ke pagi nak set up exhibition but I think I enjoy doing this with the students. Okay, uh, and grill or chill activity. This is the one that I've informed earlier where students have the opportunity to pitch at Magic Sarawak. Okay. And Mukatab exhibition is a typography exhibition. The first one we've managed to uh, have it in, tak ingat, tahun 2017 kot. Okay, 17 dan 18. Okay, so this is typography exhibition. Okay, so some of the students, okay, I think they, these are the things that they cherish after they graduate, you know not only in terms of teaching and learning, but they have something, a memory with their friends that they can, you know, remember because of all these activities and it helps to strengthen the bond between the, the students also. Okay, at least there is something. So, uh, another one is we had overseas field trip to Jogja. Mr. Seal come along with us, okay, tapi ni just one time je lah. So coming back from the field trip, uh, we've managed to have the first uh, muka type exhibition. Okay, is to give the student exposure, tengok macam mana apa ni, uh, uh, dunia luar and then get some idea from the field trip and then come back and prepare for their exhibition. Okay, this is actually something that I learned from fine arts program also. Okay, bagusnya fine arts ni dia selalu bawa student keluar field trip to give exposure for the students. Okay, so we learn from each other actually. Saya tak cakap ni semua ni idea saya but it's from the my observation to other programs, how they do it, how my peers are doing it. Okay, so this is how we learn from each other lah. Okay, Cooperative learning, okay, is from by having the exhibition and events committee. Okay, even kita ada event dengan Nikon ke, bawa student keluar buat event ke, student are the managers for these activities and event. Okay, digital technology and tools to support learning. Okay, uh, try to explore different tools with the students. Uh, ni masa awal-awal lah. Masa kita tengah excited nak try different tools, saya akan explore banyak-banyak dan try to expose to the students. Tapi but as I, over the years, I realise kalau terlalu banyak pun students susah nak catch up. So just focus on one or two tools that you think uh, really useful to your class, okay, to your course. Macam sekarang saya banyak guna Padlet and then apa lagi yang saya selalu guna? Uh, Kahoot, I still use Kahoot. Budak daripada first year sampai third year, diorang memang suka Kahoot sebenarnya kan. To break, break down the boredom actually. Uh, to get them excited. Um, what else? Okay, saya pernah guna TEDx. You buat TEDx ni, you boleh explore. Okay. Yang sekarang ni, saya guna macam Z guna juga. Mentimeter tadi. Actually, banyak lagi tools yang baru. Yang ni kalau nak tahu pasal tools, maybe perlu different session eh. Uh, so basically, I've compiled everything, okay, in my ELIP and Padlet. Semua kerja-kerja student biasanya hantar ke Padlet dan juga Google Drive. Google Drive is very helpful to to manage your students work lah. It's very easy. Okay, so ni Kahoot. Uh, this is an example of TEDx. Okay, TEDx ni you boleh uh, create your own video resource. Uh, ataupun you ambil saja YouTube video yang related to your apa ni course and then you boleh set kat dalam ni activity terus. Okay, watch is to watch. Think tu nanti untuk you buat discussion deep deeper. Okay, ni semua ada activity. Sama ada nak buat uh, soalan ABC tu. Okay, ataupun you nak buat soalan essay dengan student. Uh, so terpulang, you can plan your activity here. Uh, ni macam saya cakap, project submission saya buat through Google Drive. Ok, 
Okay, assessment strategy. Okay, kita ada formative and summative. So you have to explain the way you assess your student. So mine mostly I use formative assessment. And uh, so student will be given feedback. Sebab tu saya akan ada regular consultation dengan student normally. Memang memenatkan. So bila dah bagi projek tu saya akan bahagikan kepada uh, apa ni ada slot lagi untuk slot consultation untuk monitor dia punya progress weekly. Check okay ke tak dan keep on giving feedback. So and then bila sampai deadline, dia orang hantar during the deadline and if I think they need to resubmit, saya akan bagi peluang untuk resubmit. Okay. So that is how I assess my student. Okay. Supervision, ah, uh, please compare the list of student that you supervise. Okay, kalau ada, masukkan dalam ni. Okay, list of courses taught undergraduate program. Okay, you can list out the courses taught. Creativity and innovation in teaching and learning. Okay. There is one time when I thought uh, typography, I've created a muka type Instagram for that course. It's actually to encourage students to share their work uh, online, publicly. Okay, so student akan ada dia punya own uh, macam portfolio account on Instagram and they're going to post all their assignment and project on their Instagram uh, dan letak hashtag. So daripada situ saya akan pilih work-work yang terbaik dan post ke muka type Instagram ni. So banyak kerja sikit lah untuk kita curate but it's actually uh, good at least you have like a portfolio for your course semua dekat dalam ni. Masa ni saya buat challenge for student actually. Um, ni masa awal-awal bila diorang masuk kita nak introduce dia what is typography. So student uh, dia punya assignment saya tak ingat dah lama juga kan. Uh, so student keluar dia kena ambil gambar objek yang nampak macam alphabet from A to Z. So this is to train their observation. Okay. So siapa yang uh, gambar yang terbaik saya akan repost semula kat dalam muka type ni. So from A to Z lah. Uh, and then dia punya projek-projek lain pun saya akan post. You can check it out. Masih ada lagi Instagram ni tapi saya pun dah lupa password muka type. Okay, mm, what else? Okay, Eduvan. Okay, yang ni creativity and innovation in teaching and learning. Okay, Eduvan is actually uh, an idea that I propose when I went for uh, magic, not magic, startup weekend in Kuching. It's first started from that activities and then I've managed to uh, participate Uh, in the Magic Free Accelerator Program Bootcamp. Okay, and uh, that project was chosen as top 15 finalists uh, for me to pitch uh, with the other project. Okay, so actually I learned a lot because it's a two-week, two-week or three-weeks program. So I have to be in Cyberjaya in Magic and we've learned uh, basic like uh, business model canvas and all that. Okay, so that is what I've applied. After coming back from that uh, program, I've applied what I've learned in the commercial strategy class. Okay, so this is the the proposed idea for the project Eduven. Okay, masa ni idea untuk these apps is because masa tu kita tengah buat yang spider web tu kot untuk identify student punya soft skill. Kan? And then untuk manage class juga. So I came up with these apps. Okay. Sebab saya suka encourage student keluar pergi buat activities. So all those activities yang student attend kita akan kira as part of dia punya soft skill. This is the idea lah. And then student akan dapat satu transcript just to evaluate their soft skills. Okay. And then you can set a notification about announcement and everything and will be sent out to students. Uh, this idea was back in 2017 lah. So I got the obsolete lah sekarang. Okay, so this is the pitching session uh, with the panel of expert. Okay, and this is the time when we won uh, Kuching Startup Weekend. And then this is mobile apps for typography. Uh, saya, Maishida, 
Zam and Faiz who are in the same group. Uh, we joined this uh, competition and we won bronze award for this project. Okay. Evaluation of teaching. So you have to compile uh, and put in the evidence for your evaluation of teaching in your portfolio. Okay. So macam ni saya bagi tahu je terus terang just describe a bit macam normally kita akan dapat uh, saya lah kadang-kadang semua dah okey nanti akan ada satu dua orang student yang akan komen tak okey. Kan so memang kita akan rasa down and everything but for me that that two student memang orang cakap jangan we cannot please everyone but this two student is our reality check sometimes kan. Kita pun tak perfect tapi inilah kita punya check and balance walaupun hanya dua orang untuk kita reflect balik apa yang kita perlu improve. Right? Uh, and then students feedback. Okay, me whatever feedback from my students. I think you can read it later on. Okay. Testimonial from peers. Okay, yang ni saya ingat lagi uh, masa saya kena buat ni. Saya text a few of our colleagues, I think Mr. Seal, Ang, siapa lagi. Uh, saya minta orang WhatsApp saya, what do you think about me? Your, your apa ni? Uh, testimony, can you write a testimony about me? So, these are the feedback from our peers. Uh, ini saya paling suka baca. Girl, one of the most dedicated, blah, 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 yeah, this part. Uh, last but not least, a mother like neck. <laughs> saya memang suka way bell dekat student. Okay, so dia tahu perangai saya macam mana. Okay, alright. Okay, ni feedback from peers and then improvement in teaching and learning. Okay, so this is your personal thought yang you nak share. Okay, in your teaching portfolio. Macam saya, saya, saya rasa this is the right quotes for me. If we teach today's students as we thought yesterday, we rob them of tomorrow. Kadang-kadang kita selalu cakap macam ah kenapa lah student tak macam zaman kita dulu kan. Saya selalu cakap juga benda ni sebenarnya. Tapi bila saya fikir balik, kita tak boleh try the same approach masa kita jadi student macam mana kita diajar kepada student sekarang. Sebab zaman dah berbeza, student pun berbeza. Kalau dulu kita boleh koyak work student, ah, saya sempat lagi koyak work student beberapa tahun yang lepas tapi sekarang kita tak boleh koyak work student. Okay, kita tak boleh uh, berlaku ganas kepada student. So kita kena try new approach with our students. Maybe kita kena cara berkawan dengan dia. Kan, so dia rasa, dia tak rasa takut untuk approach kita, untuk learn more from us. So I think we need to understand our learners also and the psychology of our students in order for us to, macam mana, break the ice with the students. Okay, tapi kalau yang macam memang degil tu, tak boleh buat apa jugalah. Uh, and then kita kena remind diri kita juga, uh, we tried our best. Kan, yang lain tu terpulang pada pelajar. Right, and I think I'm thankful that I have a good, I think, uh, partner. I think uh, most of my class, I team up with my, okay. And we we always discuss about how can we improve our class. Uh, you can ada macam body yang you boleh discuss pasal class. Eh, I think... I'm lacking in this. You, you, you know how can I improve this course? You know how can I improve my assignment or assessment with students? Sometimes I even discuss with my colleague from different faculty to get their feedback. Bila saya tengok, eh, dia buat macam ni interesting for his or her class. So I I ask them, okay, macam mana you buat? Okay, macam mana you assess your student? Or, uh, so I think this, this kind of discussion is the thing that you need to have with your colleagues and also sometimes boleh tanya orang daripada luar fakulti. So dia akan bagi feedback yang kadang-kadang kita tak nampak. Kan? Okay. Macam saya sendiri, saya selalu tanya Kiman. Uh, he's a good friend. So bila saya macam rasa macam eh, I dah tak ada idea dah nak buat apa untuk kelas ni Kiman. Uh, buat pun macam it doesn't work to my students. So you have any suggestion? Kan? That you think I can improve my class. So uh, Jangan rasa macam uh, I think kita tahu semua kan I think it's okay for us to open up that we are lacking in certain area and then we invite others to chip in idea to our class and what not for improvement. Uh, that is my my opinion lah. Okay. Uh, I think that's it and then you kena bagilah contoh-contoh apa yang you dah buat sharing session sebelum ni, apa yang you dah attend yang related to teaching and learning. Okay, so all the evidences have to be here in your teaching portfolio. Okay, 
and then I think that's all. Okay, so again macam Chong dia ada cerita juga dia pergi diving, dia buat benda apa ni, benda lah ni. I mean the uh, teaching and learning portfolio ni, saya pun ada kisah juga. Saya dipaksa oleh Dr. Sal, thank you to Dr. Sal sebenarnya yang uh, encourage me to join uh, this teaching award. Saya sebenarnya tengah uh, minggu lawatan LI masa ni. Okay and then saya buat semua ni dalam masa dua hari tak tidur dan the next day I almost had an accident when I'm going to, to visit my LI students. But Alhamdulillah tak jadi apa-apa. Selamat. Okay, so that is my story, preparing for this uh, teaching and learning portfolio. Uh, itu sahaja daripada saya, uh, saya nak ulang sekali lagi disclaimer, I'm not the best, this is just happened to be my rezeki at that point of time, but I believe everyone have the fair chance uh, to win this award. Okay, so please uh, jangan rasa benda ni banyak kerja, but you should give it, give it a try, you never know. Okay, uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very thank much, Dr. Haslina. Any questions to ask? Kalau tak ada, saya nak tanya. Cik As, ini kelas uh, satu je ke ataupun banyak-banyak kelas? Kita boleh banyak-banyak banyak, banyak kelas. Apa? Ah, Untuk see. because teaching award, macam saya cakap, it, to, it is to reflect you as an academician as a whole. So, you bagi hmm. contoh kelas, kelas yang you dah buat selama ni. Dia bukan Alright. satu kelas. Fokus untuk satu kelas. Hmm. Alright, thank you very much for the uh, inspiring sharing session. Saya ingat lagi time tu bila pergi dekat uh, apa tu pameran exhibition yang uh, kelas yang ada buat. Wow, saya rasa macam bestnya adalah pergi pergi kat mana? Jogja. Uh, pergi Jogja, uh. yes. Pergi Jogja. Lepas tu balik dia orang buat exhibition yang saya kira macam uh, Macam luar biasa lah sebab saya tak pernah nampak lagi mungkin that one day they have shared and seen it uh, somewhere, somewhere else in Jogja and then they bring it here so it is something like something new for me to to, to have a look at okay which is good cuma sayangnya sekarang ni kita dah di era covid so kita tak boleh nak mm. buat lagi benda macam tu so, so I miss that environment mm. going to exhibition to real exhibition and so on okay? yeah all right anyone ada lagi soalan nak tanya Alright, kalau tak ada, thank you very much Cik Ha. So, uh, I will resume to my session. This is the last one, so please bear with me. Uh, I think this is, uh, this will be going to be a short one, okay. So, this one is for Immersive Learning Experience for Blended Award, okay. It focus on teaching methods that provide impactful and meaningful learning experience to the students by allowing them to be actively engaged in tasks or projects that are primarily done using blended learning approaches, okay. Uh, saya buat as individual, okay, for my class, masa tu GKC 1063, this is an old core animation studio one, this is still under design tag at that time, okay. And then uh, my project, in uh, the synopsis of my project is, um, the keywords here is fun and engaging way, okay. Uh, I tried to strategize the teaching and learning by adapting the use of multimedia and the internet so that students will hardly differentiate between scrolling their social media and browsing through my elite page, okay, to look at the notes, assignments, rubric, and submission link, okay. Uh, the other keywords, the important keywords that I put here is the visual look and feel, okay, of the, my elite page is the most highlighted part where I took some time to design the interface so that it looks appealing and most importantly, user friendly to my uh, target user, which is my students. Okay, so project rationale. Okay, uh, usability of the page is uh, the one that I highlight the most here because I received a comment from the previous students saying that the platform that being used by the lecturer. Uh, to assist in teaching learning was bored looking and worse it is hard to use and yeah I have to admit because I am a blended learning uh, coordinator I get to see a lot of uh, other elite from the other lecturers and they said the the most truest thing okay saya nampak macam 
susahnya nak tengok elip ni mana satu nota, mana satu assessment, mana satu uh, activity sebab tak ada proper labeling. And then ni pun akan result to come untuk susah untuk calculate sebab dia orang kan tak tahu this is activity ke, this is um, assessment ke apa ke. So the usability of the page is um, what I am highlighting here. So that if they were trying to find something in my elite page, they will, uh, they akan, akan dapat cari dengan senang. Okay. And I have my aim here so that all the assignments were properly documented in elite page so that um, masa the end of the semester, saya tak perlu nak apa cari, cari, cari my my artwork, student's artwork untuk saya buat uh, course file. Okay. Uh, my philosophy is to meet my students' expectation and need as fast and reliably as possible so that they don't have to ask me. Madam, mana, uh, apa tu? Uh, rubric, mana ni? So, saya akan letak semuanya, I'll, I'll be as transparent as possible so that uh, they orang akan dapat cari dengan cepat dan tak perlu they orang nak scroll dari atas sampai bawah cari benda yang sesimpel yang mungkin. Okay. Alright. My approach is to establish a friendly manner to the student. Means that saya tak nak dia macam rasa terkongkong sangat. Okay, elit macam boring. So, I try to create uh, yang tak boring. There's a lot of you guys have seen my elit before. So, after this, I will show to you guys. Tapi yang ni elit lama lah. Tak berapa nak cantik sangat compared to our new elit today. Okay. Uh, student could get comment uh, and upload their pictures or video. And I design a special part for every week to announce best students of the week. Okay, um, I have received a comment from my student that they are really proud to see their names under the best students of the week, and uh, it have enhanced their spirit and they feel happy whenever they enter my class because they they aim for this best students of the week. They aim for their name to be put in this section. Okay, and I also designed the avatar that resembles my me myself, so that uh, I am delivering in a human-like manner, uh, where I design a, a, a one section which we just call Madam Z reflection, and I would like to making the learning more fun and memorable in an engaging way. Okay, so this is the avatar. Okay, this is the headline. Yang lain ni saya buat dekat Canva saja. All right. So this is the information hierarchy. So I will make sure that the label, okay, uh, to be easy to read, okay, the readability of each of the item was being paid extra attention so that my student have no problem finding the items that are, that they are needs, okay. Make sure to use different colors that contrast, okay, so that it is easier for the for the student to look at and then cari whatever that they need in their elite page. And this is a feedback link. I make sure that every week I put the feedback link so that I know what. Uh, the thing that I need to improve for the next uh, class, okay, and then link for rubric and submission, everything is here so that it is clear for them in order for them to make this artwork, what they are, what are the criteria that they have to follow and so on, so everything is here, okay, and this is best students of the week section, okay, this is to enhance their spirit to add more uh, happiness in this class that tak ada lah boring sangat kan, tak ada lah macam Okay, I see, at least I see my name there, so they feel proud of themselves, okay. And weekly reflection by instructor, I made uh, uh, my post reflection uh, to this class, okay, uh, whatever that I think they should improve and this is a uh, uh, requirement for next week and so on. This is some kind of the message for me to the student. Uh, basically, I will put this uh, during the end of the learning units. Okay, so at the end of the course, I select one of the best students. Okay, so this is a, spe a section special for this student. Okay, and yeah, I, I received a comment also. He feels proud and then uh, saya ada follow this student at Instagram. They are post balik benedi dan dia rasa proud of himself, which makes me feel happy also. All right, and then approach that provide meaningful learning is uh, the headline of the page where resembles my avatar okay so that uh nampak lah okay this is madam z in uh character apa eh, 2d character so saya tak nak dia macam very rigid sangat so i make uh, my own character okay uh, the information hierarchy like i said just now the readability of each item okay it must make clear to the student okay the label 
student feedback link. Ini saya dah terangkan tadi. Okay. So, I think uh, I will show to you guys uh, how does my ellipse look like and most of you guys have shown this before. Okay. Have you uh, dapat tengok tak ni? Dapat. Uh, dapat. Okay. Dapat. Dapat. Tak orang. Tak nampak eh? Okay. Uh -huh. Ellipse masih borang lagi. Okay, so I start sharing lagi ya. This one boleh nampak? Boleh. Okay, good. Okay, so banyak yang dah tengok ellipse ni sebab saya guna this one untuk saya demo kepada lecturer yang baru-baru, okay. So ni ellipse lama memang tak berapa nak cantik but ya yeah, this is me, okay. Uh, ni guna Canva saja, tak, tak, tak perlu nak buang masa design banyak-banyak so guna saja Canva yang free tu and then I add my own character design here and put the course schedule outline, mark allocation so that students know that uh, apa schedule for this week, apa max allocation for project 1, project 2, 3 and so on and what is the course outline. Okay, so in week 1, okay, tak ada apa sangat. So lecture notes, this is activity and this is a new reminder for next week. Okay, uh, this is how it looks like lah. Okay, tak adalah cantik sangat tapi uh, saya rasa ada banyak lagi lecture lain yang ada uh, apa tu, elip yang lebih canggih but this is uh, for you to have a look at uh, macam mana yang saya dah design so that you guys can uh, tu, apply it in your elite or make it better from the one that I have here. Okay, so this is how it looks like lah. This is class activity. Uh, how do I select best students of the week? Uh, depends on the participation, depends on uh, if kalau today uh, ada quiz or something like uh, macam saya tanya soalan random diorang boleh jawab so saya akan take note on that student and then put the name here. Usually I will buat ni sebelum habis kelas. Okay, bila saya letak ni, diorang akan bersorak dalam kelas so I really miss that kind of uh, apa tu atmosphere bila saya buat macam ni diorang akan happy, diorang akan macam bertepuk tangan so sekarang ni saya tak dapat. I I still buat ni cuma tak ada that kind of atmosphere sebab semuanya dah semua mute kan kan so I do hope that this COVID-19 will go away soon so that we will have a face-to-face -face class soon. Okay, so basically this is how look, it looks like. Okay, this is the talk, okay, the documentation part. Okay, all right, this is the uh, project brief. Okay, I will put it here. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, itu saja. The same thing that I repeat every and every week. Okay. Ada soalan nak tanya? Boleh Ji kongsikan apa yang Z buat untuk reflection every week tu? Oh, uh, reflection every week. Uh, it's the same thing. Saya tanya setiap minggu. Okay, um, ni ke? Madam Z reflection ke student reflect towards me? Uh, Madam Z. Oh, saya akan uh, summarize uh, apa tu? Whatever that we have learned in the class uh, that day macam ni. Today you have presented your first ever group project. Uh, I have witnessed a lot of improvement. Macam, uh, itu sajalah my 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 comment towards the class, okay? And then, uh, one of the students said that the reminder that I put here is really helpful for them so that kalau saya terlupa nak cakap dalam kelas, saya just put it here ataupun post it in uh, WhatsApp group. Okay, basically, saya rumuskan apa yang dah diorang belajar pada hari itu. See, good, good. Alright. 